Welcome to the KTA Coding Failure Analysis Training Series. This is part two of a six-part series that describes the field and laboratory techniques used to determine why there was an intercoat delamination problem with a coating applied to a concrete floor. Each part is standalone, but when viewed in order, they present the key findings from an actual project. This video addresses part two. When examining coating problems on a floor, it's helpful to determine if there's an association between moisture content and the locations where the problems are occurring. This is especially important for slabs that are on grade. There are a number of ways to determine the moisture content of floors. For quick comparative assessments, moisture meters are preferred because they provide instantaneous results. Other methods include the plastic sheet test, but the plastic must remain in place for 16 hours before determining if moisture is present. Calcium chloride and relative humidity probes are also used. They require a 72-hour stabilization time before testing, although some manufacturers of the RH probes will allow same-day testing if the user accepts the fact that the results will not be as precise as the 72-hour test duration. For the evaluation of this floor problem, the moisture meters were used. The meters are based on electrical impedance, electrical resistance or conductivity, or radio frequency. ASTM standards address the electrical impedance meters, ASTM F2659, and both the electrical impedance and electrical resistance meters, ASTM F710. This is a radio frequency meter. To take readings with the radio frequency meter, hold the gauge along the black strips on the sides and make certain there is two-point contact with the surface. Press the button to take a reading. The results are depicted on a relative scale from 0 to 999 as well as a colored light indicator. You want two-point contact with the front of the meter and this little raised area. Put it on the surface. You get a direct readout of moisture content. We're getting a reading on this floor and it's relatively dry, but I can take my hand, which has a lot of moisture in it, and put the meter on my hand and it'll pick up the moisture. See how it gets a steady beep. When, they, uh, when it's actually detecting high quantities of moisture. The instrument reads through the paint and provides the relative moisture content in the top three-quarter inch of the surface. While the precise moisture content is not determined, the relative content is generally as follows. Green, 0 to 145 units is safe air-dry conditions. Yellow, 146 to 230 are moisture levels higher than normal, and red, 230 to 999 are excessive moisture levels. In this case, no differences were seen between the moisture content of intact and problem areas. All were in the low 200s. An electrical impedance meter was also used in the investigation. The analog version is being shown here. The instrument provides relative moisture content in the top one inch of the surface and provides results in percent moisture. We get a an MC on the meter that says 2.1. MC stands for moisture content. So moisture content of 2.1 percent. Another reading. Let's push down slightly. Moisture content 2.1 percent. Another reading. Set down, push down slightly. Moisture content 2.0 percent. While the gauge reads through the cut paint, it can be helpful to select an area determine the moisture content through the paint, and then physically remove the coating using dry removal methods, then retest the area. The difference will reflect the effect that the coating has on the readings. But for a quick survey of relative differences in moisture content to determine if there's a, a correlation with a problem, it's easy to uh, do it without coating removal. In this case, no differences were seen between intact and problem areas, all were approximately 2%, so the removal wasn't necessary. A third method involving electrical resistance and conductivity was also used. 
Here's the analog instrument. Note that there's a wood scale at the top and a reference scale at the bottom. The wood scale provides percent moisture. The reference scale, though, is the one used for concrete. It provides relative moisture content, but not a percent. Here you see the instrument being used. You'll see that the, the meter progresses to the middle of the range. When it's in that middle of the range right there, there's designation marks. You know that the meter is functioning properly. This button here with the little moisture drops is a, a read button. So when we put this in contact to the surface we want to check for moisture, we hit the read button and that gives us our reading. On the top we have two sharpened contact pins. We're actually going to set these contact pins on the surface and it's basically a uh, just a measure of the conductivity between the two pins and then it bases the moisture content on that. So we put the instrument down on our painted surface, push the read button, and we get our reading. We can actually use this conductivity method of this instrument to check the moisture within the concrete. So I'm setting them through the coating system into the concrete substrate and I'm taking the instrument, check it again, it's functioning properly, put my pins onto my nails, you can see we're getting a slightly different moisture reading than we did on the surface. The results on the surface of the paint were zero. The surface of the concrete beneath the paint was 30 to 40 units. Although the percent moisture content of the concrete is not provided, the scale can be interpreted as follows. Green, less than 85 units, is less than 2% moisture content. Yellow, 85 to 95 units, is 2 to 4% moisture content. And red, greater than 95 units, is more than 4% moisture content. In this case, the surface of the paint and the surface of the concrete were both in the green range. There were no differences. All of the instruments in this case showed the floor to be dry. No correlation between moisture content and paint performance. That's it for part two. Log on to ktuniversity.com to see other KTO videos in this series for the collection of background information, other types of hand-on testing used to examine the problem, the methods used to collect samples, and the laboratory analysis undertaken to determine the cause. At the same site, you'll find a listing of other instructional videos that are available for your viewing.